There's a very polarising chapter in Doctor Who with Colin Baker at the helm. Fans have never, and likely will never, agree on it, as there's vocal support in favour of, and opposing it. Is it underrated, or was it always problematic, bordering on bad? We're going to debate it until the end of time itself, and probably a little bit further. From my perspective, I have nothing bad to say about the actor in the lead role. I think Colin is a fantastic performer who deserved so much more, and got a thanks to the creative team at Big Finish. Any criticism I level at episodes such as The Twin Dilemma, The Two Doctors and Attack of the Cybermen bears no ill will against him, but the quality of the written text and direction the actor receives. But I can never make up my mind on both seasons. Some I loved as a kid but as an adult don't work, and some I like one day and then the next I think, really? It depends on the state of mind you're in, like the majority of Scott Lynch and Kubrick's filmography and Terence Malick as well. I don't always see eye to eye with 2001 A Space Odyssey in the same way I can find it hard to enjoy Revelation of the Daleks in spite of elements I should latch onto. However, I am not saying that this era is without one standout story. Matt Smith's second and third series, which get worse with each retrospective, include legitimately great adventures like Night Terrors, The Girl Away It, and Unpopular Opinions Alert, The Power of Tree, and The Rings of Akaten. In Colin's first season, the second story is a better example of his troubled tenure. From the pen of the writer of Gangsters, Philip Martin, we have the imperfect but holds up better on reflection, Vengeance on Varos. Immediate points for alliteration. When it was first broadcast, this two-part received criticism for its level of violence, as shown on points of view and in the Radio Times. What's interesting about this is that now, these weren't solely Mary Whitehouse and her campaign's critiques, the public and the fan base weren't happy here, but I think they were missing the point of what the episodes were saying. Vengeance on Varos discusses an audience's obsession with the perverse. There's a Greek chorus of the characters of Arak and Etta. Arak looks a bit like an older Robert Popper, the creator of Look Around You and Friday Night Dinner. And Etta's played by Sheila Reed, who will go on to play Clara's nanny in Smith and Capaldi's run, but is probably more well known for her role in Benador. These two are pretty funny to watch in a dark humour kind of way. I love the ones Varus has put right, they don't know what to do with their lives, now that their own reality program is off the air. Looking at it in 2018, Philip Martin unknowingly predicted Gogglebox. Oh, and if you watch Game of Thrones, or remember him from the Torchwood episode, Countryside, there's a very young Owen Teal as Maldak. Also starring is the legendary actor Martin Jarvis, who played one of the Binoptera on the web planet, now back in Doctor Who as the governor on Varus. He's one of the strongest actors in this two-parter. Kind of feel sorry for him with all the times he's nearly killed by the green light of death. And I know it's called something else, but it's techno babble at the end of the day. But as strong as Jarvis is, it's Nabil Shaban as Sil who takes the title of the most valued player. Not only has he an interesting design as a native to the planet Thor Beta, but he's quite funny in both the character's vanity and obsession with sick shit. And he holds the distinction of having one of the best and most unique of all evil laughs. I wonder if Anthony Hopkins stole it for Silence of the Lambs. And I think the creative team knew they had a good character because Sil and his homeworld will appear in the next season as part of the Trial of a Time Lord in the present segment, Mind Warp. The best Colin Baker story because it's got an interesting wrong vibe and Brian Blessed is in it too so it's got to be worth something right. VOV also features Sean Connery's son Jason and the unnecessary but unashamedly Cam Phantom of the Opera character, Quillam. Yeah, he could have easily been cut out, but he's fun to watch in a Doctor Evil kind of way. He even does a similar gesture with a finger to his mouth. Shame he gets killed off with the hands of the Doctor and the Rebels. Man who never would, my arse. Interestingly, people give out about the acid bath scene, although the Doctor isn't intentionally trying to push them in. But they'll overlook that moment. My two cents is that Sayward and Martin were probably trying to give him a James Bond kind of moment or two. There's another character with more than one face. I don't think there's any issues with the main idea behind Vengeance on Varus. It was appropriate in the decade of video nasties and edgy family films, and it does have its relevance with reality television drawing in huge views in spite of dubious content, but I don't think Doctor Who was ready for the 45 minute formula in the late 1980s. The Five Doctors isn't an issue because that's a special anniversary episode made for children in need, and Resurrection of the Daleks was originally four episodes that were merged into two because of outside factors. For instance, the scenes with the Doctor and Perry and the TARDIS go on too long. Sorry, I know fans like the duo, and to be fair, the characters don't great on me in VOV, but it's just padding. The same as the embarrassing alphas and nappies, or diaper if you use American English, pretending to be cannibals. I don't know what that adds to the story, and Perry getting turned into a bird also could have been left out. 
because I don't see the merit in having that in it. You could also say the talky scenes with Jarvis and Forbes Collins could be cut, but they're a bit too relevant with today's politics going on for ages and digging themselves into deeper and deeper holes. Maybe they were intentionally dull. I don't know. I mean, granted, classic Doctor Who is a victim of padding, but what separates Miss Duckett's, oh no, Miss Ducas scenes in The Seeds of Doom from anything with Chin the Politician in The Claws of Axos is that the former is entertaining and the latter annoys you so much you just wish you would get killed off and he never does. But I wouldn't discourage newcomers from watching Vengeance on Varus. I think it's up to you whether you gravitate towards the Colin Baker years or not. It's a shame that, to me, there's more bad than good, but don't blame the lead because as the old saying goes, an actor is only as good as the material he's given. Where the season falters with its unnecessary and poorly done violence and oversaturation of continuity, <coughs> Vengeance on Varus has a script that's on its own and the edge serves a point and is far less gratuitous when compared to other Eric Sayward edited scripts. Although his Doctor shines off screen more so than on it, give Vengeance on Varus a shot as the story featuring Colin Baker, the sixth face of Doctor Who. Eight and a half out of ten. Flawed but recommended Who with Colin's Doctor. Whether you like it or not, that's for you to decide.